That's good. Yeah. Good there. Yeah. We this was the best possible site we could have come up with. We're at about 3,900 meters right now. And once you get to about 5,000 meters, you are above where most of the science on the planet has been done. Both panels in here. Yeah. Between 5,000 meters and the top of Everest, there's been almost nothing. We don't know much about this elevation band at all. We're on Mount Everest, right on the border between Nepal and China. It's the highest mountain in the world, and it's part of a very large mountain range called the Himalayas. We're here on a two-month expedition with National Geographic. Oh, it is, it is. It is coming. <laughs> the big reason that we're here is to study climate change. We know that the climate is warming. The Himalayas have experienced rates that are higher than the average uh, global rate. What's extremely remarkable about this expedition is that it is the largest scientific expedition ever undertaken in the Everest region and certainly the most multidisciplinary. The scientists involved in this program came from the fields of uh, glaciology, from mapping, from geology, from biology, and from meteorology. The ultimate goal of this project uh, is to turn the science into something that has value for the people. My involvement has been primarily being able to answer a very big question. Is what is going on today something that's part of a natural cycle or not? You do that by getting as long a record as you can and seeing if what's going on today is markedly different than what's happened in the past. Ice cores are the most robust tool that we have for looking at past climate. Come with you. Okay, go ahead. An ice core is a cylinder of ice. Uh, drill is simple tube. They just gently scraping ice. You guys have it. The bottom part of the drill will collect the ice core itself. And the ice core stays in the tube. Then we'll need an extension, orange extension. From ice cores, we can tell all sorts of things. Its best analog are basically tree rings. The big deal is that you want to be able to count year by year. And we can tell past temperature, precipitation, biological productivity in the ocean, biological productivity on land, volcanic activity. Transporting the ice cores just to keep it at a low, a low enough temperature um, in order to ensure that the ice cores will actually be cold enough uh, is a challenge. Okay. Put the blue ice on top of the ice cores and then put it back on the helicopter and then, and then send it back. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Data. <laughs> it's really important to have biologists included in an expedition that is primarily physical sciences. They're a tremendous way in which you can understand how the climate is changing. When we look at high mountain environments, species that live on the summits are the most impacted by the effects of climate change. Oh, my fingers are totally numb, but I'm still working with them. <laughs> Our goal is to be able to document all the species we can to really have a better understanding of what species live up here, because this is the highest place in the world. Ah, we chopped a hole in the ice so that we could reach the liquid water beneath. And what Tick is doing here is he's creating pressure in the chamber that draws the water up so that it captures all that onto the filter. And then the filters will go back to the lab to identify what species may be living in this lake. We can then look to see how climate change may be impacting those species. You can see the cells. So cool. Yeah. yeah. We will have a framework 
from monitoring how much a one degree centigrade, a two degree centigrade, what sort of an effect does that have? When we talk about climate change, climate's made up of weather. To actually have a weather station at the highest point in the world where you're literally touching the next level of the atmosphere is critically important. We really, in many of these mountain regions, have not had the observations to fully understand how precipitation forms. And we can improve those understandings, we can have a much better idea of climate change. The day-to-day -day changes in temperature, hour-to-hour, -hour, temperature, precipitation, and storms, uh, gradually as you average them up over longer periods of time, like months and years, they become climate, and then you can begin to see trends. The next big task, within an, a year or so, we will have analyzed the data and we'll understand it scientifically and technically. The next big challenge is how do we apply it? It's simply our responsibility to make what we find relevant to people. The opportunity to tell this story and actually make a difference. If you can change people's lives, that's unbelievable. <laughs>